So welcome everyone to our District 95 webinar. And today we have a special host from Denmark, from Toastmasters Colding. And uh, today, um, Sebastiano Pino Garo is going to um, to reveal his secrets about the PR. Uh, he's really passionate about PR and he was leading a vice president of PR role uh, with um, with passion and with um, with a sac many successes. So I'm leaving the floor to you, uh, Sebastiano. And uh, in meantime, if you are going to have any questions, I'm happy to um, to direct those questions uh, to Sebastiano. So you can use the chat box and um, definitely uh, we will, he will answer all your questions. So welcome once again. Thank you very much for, for joining this webinar and for preparing yourself. I've seen your slides. They look, they look amazing and I really can't wait uh, to, to listen what you're going to, to speak and what uh, knowledge you're going to share with us. So welcome very, very warmly. Thank you. So, uh, well, I repeat again, welcome everyone to the webinar and thank you for making time today to, to listen to these insights from this small club somewhere in southern Denmark. So, I have a presentation and uh, I just want to walk you through that so that we may be able to, to be within the time limits. So, I am now going to start with the presentation. And uh, first of all, hi team. Thank you again for joining. And I'll have here the main point. We want all to have our clubs standing out. There are a lot of clubs, there are a lot of different activities people can do in their free time, and we want them to be dragged onto Toastmasters. The main social media that we are going to use today is going to be Facebook. And this is one of the toolbox that we can use to make ourselves stand out. This is the overall theme, and I'll walk you through on how I have created a strategy for the club, how that got implemented, what results we had, and what we have learned out of it. But first, who am I? Who am, who's the Sebastiano from Italy living in Calding and Denmark in the small, tiny city? Well, this is my face, but I mean, you guys see my face more updated now on the webcam. <laughs> And uh, I am mostly a passionate of learning. I like to learn new things. I am very curious. And uh, I'm always striving to find new ways and especially fun ways to get things through and to see things growing and people growing and in this case, our clubs growing. I'm a fan of strategic planning. So I like to have plans and to plan ahead in a strategic way in order to hit my targets. And uh, I have served Toastmasters calling as vice president for public relations for uh, more than one and a half year. I'm currently uh, the treasurer and uh, I've covered presidents and other roles during the change of board that happened last year. Just in case that you don't hear anything or you heard something not in the proper way, please just type it in the chat box. I won't be able to read it, but just, you know, we'll do that and will interrupt me in case that you haven't said on anything. So I want this to be a dialogue uh, and whatever you see on the slides and you'd be like, oh, I want to know more, please interrupt, please let me go back. It's no problem with me. The more we conversate, the better, the better we get out of this whole webinar. This presentation's purpose. I want to share, I want you to learn and also me myself because by sharing, I learn even more because I will learn from you and I want to inspire. I want to inspire you to find new ways of getting your club standing out, of getting your club visible on social media, and also on engaging new members in your local area. So the outline of the presentation is the following, who we are as a club, our strategy, the survey. So this is the main point, actually. <laughs> it's something that initiated the whole webinar our idea is because we did the survey and I'll walk you through to the ideas that were behind the survey, how the survey has been created and what actually the survey allowed us to do, which is actually directly connected to our Facebook page. So this is the outline. You'll see a blue bar at the bottom of the slide. And the more we go ahead, 
the lighter the bar will be. So you can understand how long the presentation is and how many slides you're missing according to that. Of course, the overall goal for the reason why we're here of the webinar is to actually inspire one another and to share our insights all over the district. So you see, like, I just want to point out bottom right, you see that it got like one block of lighter blue out of the whole blue line. That means that this is the first part of the presentation. Then you'll see that growing. So uh, you will have a feeling of what's happening and how long I'm going to talk. But again, feel free to interrupt me. And Justina, please do that as soon as you want, whenever you feel it's better. OK, so I can start. And uh, I want to say that we are a very much international club. Calling is a small city in Denmark, but is where more than four universities are located. A number of international companies are located in the area. So the most of our team um, club members are internationals. We're both students and professionals. We are currently more students and less professionals. We're trying out to make a more professionals oriented strategy to retain people who can stay longer in the club because many of the students who we work with and who are part of our club are leaving um, rather soon because they are on Erasmus programs and a number of other programs that take them out of Denmark. So this is one of the challenges that you may also be facing in your local club. We have an attendance of almost 20 people for every meeting. We are currently 16 members. And we have a high turnover of members, as I told you already, that's because there are many of us internationals. And we are Toastmasters Club calling. So that, that's what I'm talking about. So if you happen to be around calling, you're more than welcome to come visit. You're more than welcome to reach out to me and to the many of other colleagues that we have who are more than happy to host you and show you how our club works. Again, should there be any questions, please bump into the conversation and I'm more than happy to get back to you. I'm starting now with our strategy. So we have two target groups. We have students and professionals. Initially, this uh, survey that it's actually the core of this presentation was aimed at students. Now, as I said, we have achieved that target. We have achieved the students we wanted in the area. And now we want to focus more on professionals. But this presentation will be focused on the initial target that were actually students. Students that are both internationals, so foreigners and Danes. We want to uh, draw a five month plan ahead. This plan consists of Facebook campaigns, consists of posting, and consists of budgeting, so how much money we allocate every month for our PR campaigns. Um, that varies for our club according to the period. There may be like an easier period where we maybe just allocate around 20 euros. For Danish, like located people is around 150 kronas. In periods where we need more push and more drive, then we may even allocate something around 30 to 40 euros. But of course, that all depends and it's just a board level. Second, we try to not only focus our PR strategies on Facebook and online platforms, but also in local organizations. An example of this for us has been uh, the student association that creates events for students. And so basically our partnership with them was liking and sharing their events on our page and they were doing the very same on their own page. So we were basically sharing the two different networks and circles. We uh, wanted to organize this university display of meetings events. So it was a kind of fair, but not really. It's more of a stand where you say, stay there and you explain to the people who are around you what is Toastmaster about. And you may even have a small session of table topics or some of the favorite activities that you like to do within your Toastmaster club. In this case, we had chosen universities simply for the reason because we were targeting students. So that was our main target. Of course, this can be applied on corporate level and have the very same activities within corporations. But the very cool point about all of this is this external surveys done through Google form that foster promotion and feedback on the club page. So this was the core of the strategy was, okay, 
we know that we can use Facebook. We know that we have local organizations to whom we can partner with, but we want to go out there. We want to meet people. We want those people that we meet to know about us. So we wanted to basically create awareness about who we were in that specific target group. And something that is very interesting always is about money. How much money do we spend? And uh, the trick in all of this with the Google form survey is that people don't want to make surveys. It's not easy. It's not something that, oh, you just go out in the street and people will be happy to stop by and waste some time filling in your survey. So we had an idea. We were like, OK, we go to the uni. We stay there maybe a couple of hours. That was the plan. But how can we engage with people? Like, why should a person take out of their free time after a whole day at uni, a whole of their work, whatever that may be, to stop their two, three minutes and talk to us and fill in a survey? That was a challenge. So what we created was actually we put ourselves in the shoes of somebody who gets a survey on the street. And so we, at some point, decided, OK, let's give a reward. And there you can get creative. So this is the core of the thing. Get a reward. And this is the money, you know? It's because this money indicates the price of one cookie. One DKK is like around 13 cents of euros. And, and so you can get it with 10 coronas, which is one euro 30, 10, uh, 10, um, sorry, 10 cookies. So this price is basically what we use to have one survey filled in and having one potential member. Because the way that we handed the, the whole thing was, OK, you sign, uh, you get in here, you do your survey. We were using both laptops and smartphones. So it was something very easy. It was not paper-based. It was really quick. You get the cookie, of course, if you want, at the end of the survey. And at the very same moment, should you want to have your Facebook page open, we were showing them where we were on Facebook and how they could like us and why they should like us. And it was not just about the like, was you can see our events, you can see the people who attend the meetings, you can see the photos, you can find discounts because we run sometimes discounts on campaigns. So this is the whole idea of the strategy, basically summed up at the very beginning. Are there any questions? Because I heard a bit of the chat already a couple of times, and I just wanted to make sure Everyone can understand. Okay, perfect. I can see. So maybe I will interrupt you, Cristiano, because it's uh, related with people who are coming in and coming out. So uh, don't uh, please pay attention to those beeps. However, I received a private um, message uh, if you're going to share this presentation with us. Of course, so, I am. Yeah. Okay, great, fantastic. So maybe I will have a first question to you uh, yeah. regarding the strategy. So um, I just want to make sure that I understood it correctly. So you attend or you created event like um, event somewhere outside of your club, and you are just uh, inviting people to um, to fill the um, the Google form which you created on your devices, yeah, on your smartphones and. Uh, uh, smartphones and uh, laptops and how long this event uh, last we booked event or like attending events already organized by the different uh, organizations so uh, well the, the thing is that here i put like a little bit of everything of what we did starting okay. with the survey the survey was a two-hour event so we decided okay from one to three we go to the uni and we stay there and we survey people so that was the thing. And that worked out with the Google form and the cookies and the strategy behind it. So the questions and what we wanted and trying to drag people onto our Facebook page. Regarding local organizations, that was more of a social media thing. So we were like, we have this number of likes. You have that number of likes. Our audiences are almost the same. So it would make sense if we share each other's event on our pages when you when you post on a periodical um, way. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Thank you very much for answering this question. I have another question for from Federico. Uh, can, can you provide us, uh, Sebastiano, some ideas of how the service should look like? As you sure. said, it's boring or too long. So do you have any? Yeah. 
example. The next, the next slides are about that. Oh, okay, fantastic. So I think that uh, that that we are ready to to wait for that. Okay, so that that's that, that, that's it so far. So please. Perfect. So getting on to the next slide, it's our survey via Google Form. So, well, I guess many of you guys know Google Form. It's a free service. You can create survey real quick, and then you get all your data out in an Excel sheet. Our four questions were really easy. We wanted to have four questions only. Usually surveys have way more. Of course, there is space for creativity to make way longer surveys. But in our case, we knew exactly what we wanted. First of all, we wanted to know, do these people know about us? So do you know Toastmasters? We wanted to know which skills they wanted to improve at a time in 2017. So we wanted to know basically the list, we had a list of skills, and I'll show you the, the Google form that I used at the time, which of course matches what we do at Toastmasters. And we wanted to see, okay, what do people want? And eventually those words, those skills that we're interested within, they popped up later in the Facebook post that we were paying for where and when so we wanted to know in the third question why they prefer certain days over others and if they have any preferred location because for us that was a matter of concern so this third point can be tailored according to your own club and then the last point was actually the email address that we wanted to have their own email address so that we could invite them to our meetings as guests this point, I have to be sincere, did not really work out well because people did not want to leave their own private email address to us. So then I flipped the thing around. I'm like, should you not want to leave our your email address to us? Then I can show you on your phone with your Facebook app what our Facebook page look like. And then I was explaining them what they could find on them and simply like it. So I kind of turned this around the last point. But basically, these were the four points that we were targeting with the survey. We had in total 25 answers. So something around 25 coronas, which is, let's say, three euros of basically payment for this results. Three questions, as you see. Well, it's because the last question I don't consider one is its email address or anyways, contact towards the people. Two devices. So the devices that I had used were my phone and my laptop. And you'll be like, why two devices? Like, wasn't one enough? Well, the idea of the two devices comes in when you don't meet one single person. So if it is an individual, like, it's alone, it's there, you talk to the person, and that's fine. But very often you see people grouped up and uh, you want to approach them. And of course, you don't want to miss out on the opportunity to have four answers in one go. So Having my phone and having my computer allowed me to be like, okay, you two guys use this computer and then we can use together my phone. So I even got to the point, since the questions were this easy and this quick, to be like, do you know Toastmasters? And then I was typing in the question, the answer. Which skills would you like to improve 2017? And I was thinking all the answers that they were basically saying. So the survey was actually very dynamic. It was not them filling in something or ticking some boxes. It was more a conversation with me, and I was keeping track of the answers. Last point is actually awareness. That's what we wanted. The result was create awareness in those 25 people who did not know about us, who hopefully liked our page and two minutes later did not dislike it, and who actually came to our club meetings as guests or simply told other people, hey, you know, there is this event coming up. It's twice a month. It's happening here. And the guys are very nice. And I met them this way. So this is the whole idea of our survey in the bigger picture. Then I'll go into detail and show you exactly what the survey looked like. So this is Google Form and how that looks like. But this is very like default like all of you guys having a gmail account can have access to this but i want to show you the exact google form that i used at a time which is this one and uh, you can see this was the basically the form we don't like the google form yet sorry we cannot see it can you please share this form with us yet that's interesting why you need to move it to the other screen okay oh, let me try do you see it now 
Yes. You see it now? Okay. Perfect. So this was the Google form that I created. And as it as I told you already, the first question was simply awareness. Have you ever heard of Toastmasters before? So it was not tailored on us as calling, but it was in general. Are you aware of this? What would you like to improve in 2017? I, I still cannot see it, and I received many information. I received information from people that ca they cannot see as well. OK, that's interesting. I don't know why. Do you guys have tried already to use like the browser while sharing the screen? Do you have to do anything specific to show it or? Yeah, we tried. I can see it. I can see it on my screen properly. So maybe we just need to wait before it loads to, you know, before it appears in the people who are not the organizers of the meeting. Okay. I'll just wait a couple of minutes. I mean, a couple of seconds to see if everybody gets on. It's basically a Google Chrome page. And, oh, and yes, now I can see it, yep. Okay, cool. So is everybody on the same page? Yeah, I think, yes. I, I see many confirmations that people Perfect. can see. So awesome. I use it. Yeah, thank you. So starting off again, well, we have here a very short intro. So who we are, we provide self-paced programs aimed at becoming better leaders and communicators. All the activities are held in English, making this the ideal opportunity for you to improve. So this was kind of our selling proposition. But getting to the questions, which is, I guess, what you're mostly interested into is, have you ever heard of Toastmasters before? So you see that it's not tailored on calling only, but it's in general, like, is the organization known at you? Second, what would you like to improve in 2017? And here you go. You have networking, public speaking, leadership, English skills, because we have the whole club run in English, and self-confidence. And of course, you can add more in the field. So basically, all of these skills are what we associate our club and Toastmasters in general to in order to sell basically the product. If Toastmasters could help you improve the above mentioned, would you like to attend our meeting? Yes or no? And then we tell them meetings are held every first and third Wednesday of the month. And in this case, we want it to understand, OK, the time that we meet, 5.30, is that OK? Is that not OK? And we actually got a change on this. Now we're meeting all the times at 6, because people getting out of office and things, and then maybe commuting to calling was not ideal to meet up at 5.30. So we got this change into our system. And the very last one was, well, you only live once. Don't waste this opportunity. Let's get in touch. So here was very dramatic, but it was mostly to get their email address. And uh, as I said, they were not very prone to leave their email addresses at us. So then the way that I worked this out was, if you have Facebook and you want to follow us, I can tell you where we are and what we do and show them our Facebook page that you will see later in the presentation. So this is the way that you make Google Forms. It's really like intuitive, like there is a plus and you can add questions, you can delete questions. You can add texts and videos and things. And it's very nice because it's all worked out on Google Drive. And then you have the responses. You can have the summary. You can have individual. You can get an Excel sheet from like the top right green icon, create spreadsheet. And then, of course, you can scroll and simply see what happens. So as you see, for example, like the level of awareness was very low. Most of the people did not know about Toastmasters, but a good 36%, so nine people knew about it. And here we clearly see what we have to work on and what we have to brand ourselves with. So apparently, like English skills was a thing. Many people were interested in improving their English, and so that's something that we targeted from that moment onwards. And here, well, it was mostly on when to meet up, if it was a yes, if was no if it was no for work or some other reasons and then the last whole treasure this is the whole core of of the presentation but the idea is we now have collected this data so we know that people don't know about us and what to do next do you have any questions so far let me just see here did you uh gathered any questions that i should be answering let's see 
Now I just see the class about other foods. So we can always grow the business. <laughs> yes. And um, I have a question, uh, Sebastiano. So, um, uh, did you measure how many people return from this, um, let's call, membership campaign? Yes. We did so. And so what we did, of course, with the ones who left our, their email address and things, we tried to reach out to them. But then we created something else. We have another Google form that is basically our guest book. So we use the guest book to record the people that come in as guests. I don't know if I have it here or it's, no, I guess it's in another account. Um, but basically it's the very same Google form where we record your name, your surname, and how did you meet us? And that's where we type in, okay, was it through a Facebook campaign? Was it through word of mouth? Was it through um, a campaign, a membership campaign like this of a survey? And actually, out of this 25, we had a return rate of about five to six. That's what I remember. So it's one fifth of the people that we surveyed. But it created a lot of buzz because then people liked our page and they saw the pictures. And something that really works for our club is that people see other people that they know in the pictures that we post, and then they decide to come and join. So in that regard, that's how we tracked the whole um, membership floating thing. Okay, so that is really a high ratio. <laughs> of yeah, the... yeah, for us it was, and it was very cheap. It was just 25 coronas, which is three euros, and two hours of work. <laughs> so we were very happy about it. <laughs> so uh, if there are no not any other questions, I can just proceed with the rest of the presentation. Yes, please. Perfect. Yeah, I just see one question from Naomi. Naomi is asking, so you made contact with 25 people and six became members, question mark. So was it like that or did they just come as guests? Six came as guests and four became members because we had the seasonal membership form. Basically, it's like our membership goes for six months. And uh, so four of them became, then unfortunately they could not renew because they left Denmark. So out of the 25, four became members. That's pretty good. Okay, perfect. So I can proceed on the next point, which is actually our Facebook page, because this whole survey, this whole research that we're doing and things is because we wanted to improve on one channel. We are a rather like medium sized club, but we really did not want to waste any energies on Instagram or any other social media because we were like, we already have enough on, on the plate and we want to make the most out of what we have. So we were like, for now, as the club is this size and this amount of people are participating actively in order to manage the club, we just focus on one platform. And for that was Facebook to us because we can have our events, our everything. So we're like, let's focus on this. So here I just give you some data regarding how our Facebook page is performing. We started off February 15th, 2016. So that's why we're almost two years that we've been created. And today is January 24th, and I want to give you some data about how we do. We have 356 likes, most of which we have gathered face to face, meaning there are friends of friends or people who came and heard about us and things. So we have not focused a paid campaign on likes, but our paid campaign was more on reach. So we wanted to reach the most number of people that we were interested into and try our best to grab those people and have them in our meeting. All in all, we're doing a good job because we have five-star reviews, not only from us, the board member, but also from people who joined the meetings and who are guests and they enjoyed it. So this is just a little bit of status on who we are. And just so you know, last year at this point, we had 265 likes, so we increased up around 100. And we're very proud of this because we, as I said, trying to make the most out of a very close community and a community that is interested about us and not just like liking the page because we told them to do so. We want them to have a reason to like the page so that you can see our events, so that you can see the people who join and create this engagement directly with the potential members. So the other very important thing about our Facebook page is actually the cover picture. Because in the cover picture, we have put 
basically what we stand for, and that is public speaking, networking, and leadership. So we focus a lot on this, and if you even click onto the, the cover picture, we also have put the data. So we meet up every first and third Wednesday of the month. So the this is this is my little hint. Usually cover pictures for clubs maybe just the picture of the whole group, which is amazing. We had that before, but then we were like, this is like free advertisements. Like when people get onto our page, they see this. So we're not making the most out of it, like in this case, so that they know what we stand for and we ask them to join our next meeting. Clear, simple, and direct. So this is a small little tip that I would share with you. And then it comes in actually how our uh, Facebook page is basically organized. We have different posts. This is a pins post. So it's basically how to become a member in three steps. And they have the membership form right here, right there. I have to admit that it's not being used the way that we want, meaning, oh, somebody wants to become a member, click on there and then hand it over to us. That never happens. But for sure, we could uh, relate to it. So we were like, okay. I can show you, here's the membership form. You'll be filling in this data. Are you okay with that? And if they've said yes, then we were of course having the paper-based version of it. But regarding this post, I have two, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> two things I want to highlight. You gotta be wild, in my opinion, with emoticons and capital letters. Well, of course this is a style. There are different styles of making posts on Facebook. There is a lot of creativity in there. But what we tried from the very beginning was to make it somehow more friendly and uh, as engaging as possible. Like we were like, would you like to read this post? And I was like, okay, this post sounds cool because I can't understand how to member three steps, all capital, okay. If I'm interested in becoming a member, then I continue reading. If I'm not, that's okay. And then we made it, as I said, very friendly with emoticons and the, also the simply style of talking, like stalk us real good. And if you got questions, we will be there for you and things like that. So these are my two first takeaways for you when posting on Facebook. Of course, that goes along with the style of your club, how serious you are or how friendly you want to be. But this is something that I believe it's important to bring light on. And again, the question is, would you read that post? Would that be interesting to you after a whole day at work? You have family, maybe, friends, you're busy, and you're just now scrolling over the Facebook page and you want to chill out and not have your mind too much busy, but catch the information as quickly and as easy as possible. So, so this was basically our rationale throughout the whole Facebook strategy of posting. But then we also uh, discussed how we want our events for our meetings look like. And we had a, uh, a, team, a theme of the meeting at the time and was blend in or stand out. And then of course, you need to choose a photo for the event. Um, our club, we have always tried to find a relevant photo to the theme. And not only a relevant photo, a photo that would attract attention and be like, oh, okay, this makes sense. The guy is standing out because of the pinkish Bermuda. And so this is maybe something that you may also consider if you're not doing that already. Maybe you are, and that's amazing. And the same thing comes here with a the networking the meeting theme. So having different skin colors, having different people helping one another and cooperate. Again, captivating pictures. So that's the takeaway for this slide. Theme related. And also add your board members as co-hosters of the event so that people see, oh, it's not only Sebastiano who's hosting this event, there are a number of other people who are involved in that. And so then they relate to the fact that behind Toastmaster Club Calling, there's not one person, but there are five people who are managing it, if that makes sense. If there are no questions on those two points regarding captivating pictures, theme related, and emoticons and capitals, I would proceed with the rest. I guess there are not. Yes, please proceed. Okay, cool. Then we also thought of something else. We were like, so we have our, well, basically the pinned post, how to become a member. It's always there, always nice. Then we have the um, post regarding our next events, what's going to happen, captivating pictures, have fun, engage with people. But what about after? Like, you know, you see all of these events and be like, okay, I'll, I did not 
managed to go there or ah, don't think it's the right thing for me. And we were like, okay, we want to give some people, the ones who could not join or the ones who are simply interested, something to think about, you know? So we were like, do after meetings posting. And again, following the very same rules. So yesterday meeting, meeting was inspirational and great fun. Be the captain of yourself, in that case was the theme of the meeting meeting, Emoticon, join our next meeting for free, because it's also a thing. I don't know how clubs are managed all over. I assume that being a guest is most of the times, at least the first time for free. Other clubs may have some kind of fee to pay afterwards. In our case, we always allow guests to come in for free as many times as they want. So with a basically a uh, call to action. And then of course you wanted them to follow us on Facebook. We have reached with this post, without one euro being spent on advertising, 686 people, which is a lot for not having paid anything. And we reached 20 likes, which out of the 250 likes that we had at the time, it's a 10% return on investment, if we want to put it that way. So not too bad. First point is group picture. Have the people who joined the meeting in the picture. Second point, make it look like, well, it's also true, but make it look like as best as you can, as if there is a team feeling, which of course in our clubs is there, but it's important to make sure that people are smiling, that there is a warm atmosphere, and that we're all happy. 12 people tagged. That's how we got the 686 people reached without spending one euro, because most of the people who were in the photo, they got tagged and therefore their friends saw the picture. And eventually they maybe even got asked, oh, I saw your picture the other day. What were you doing? Oh, it's like that. Oh, it's so cool. I would like to join. And that is actually one of our winning points. So many of our team members came in through word of mouth, having watched a picture from somebody and got inspired. And then again, it comes in again, the capitals, emoji and tagging that is true to our friendly style of posting, which is not a must, but it's the way that we do it. Any questions regarding this? Maybe Mike one, uh, Lucas speaking. I'm curious whether, I mean, like when you show this post like this, it's, it, looks, it looks good. But do you do anything specific to make it look, not to make it look repetitive, you know, because every week you post their picture of the group, if it's a similar pattern, template, it might look repetitive. That's a good question. Well, we have tried, uh, because like, this was still when I was the VPPR, and now the VPPR is another girl. And uh, what we're trying to do now is to make a combo. So we don't only have the group picture, we have a singular picture of people that we take during the meeting. Maybe it's like a nice handshake, it's a nice pose. And we also have like short videos. Short videos are taken somehow trying to catch the most interesting bits of the meeting. But it sometimes is that that's very natural. Maybe it's just a joke or something. So we put it there. And so this way it does not create boredom on the audience. That's what we try to do. Right. Thank you. Does this answer the question? Lucas, does this, uh, this, this that, sorry, did this answer your question to the one that you had how to keep like the audience attracted to our posts or would yes. you like to have some more info? Yes, it okay. did. I'm happy cool. now. Thank Perfect. you. Good. So, of course, in all of this, we also are promoting our next meeting and that's why they're for free and the date and at what time. Here there is another meeting of another example of our after meetings, still with a photo, which is the very same um, format as before. Here we reached more people, less likes, but in our case, again, our goal was the reach. And we saved money because we reached people without paying anything. It was just the hustle of posting right after the meeting and tagging the people. Of course, you gotta ask your board members on how they want to plan this, if they want to plan this ahead. Because in our case, like I took it very seriously. I had a reminder on my personal calendar being like, okay, after the meeting, post a picture or take the picture and then post it. Because it looks something like really easy, really easy, which is not, because you gotta have all the people gathered there and uh, make sure that you take action soon. Another point that we had was regarding the word of the day. 
which we did a couple of times, if I gotta be honest, we tried to do this on the other week. So if in the week that we had the meeting, we were posting the after meeting picture, the other week where we had no meeting, then we were posting the word of the day from the previous meeting. So kind of a thing like word of the day that you gotta learn, something like that. And uh, this was a format which, as I said, has not gone too far. But if there is anybody who's very passionate about PR and social media, well, this is, of course, an extra format to take care of. So word of the day, guest suggestion. We were also asking for suggestions to them or maybe even like having one person suggesting the word so to feel important somehow for the next time. It creates continuity, of course, if you keep on doing that. As I said, honestly, we did this like three, four times, not more than that. And uh, early stages, well, here, this thing, I don't know what I relate it to, but I don't, I'm not pretty sure why I wrote early stages. Maybe it was something regarding, in general, like our brand image, not to make it look only about the meeting, but also on getting inspired and getting to learn day by day and uh, having that somehow miniaturized in different tasks and different areas of the experience. We had also another format. I know that I'm throwing a lot of info at you, so no worries. You'll get all the presentation for this, all the slides, so that you can then work it out with your team members. So we tried doing the same with our agenda before the meeting. So if, of course, you know how many speakers you have before the meeting, then you can make basically a kind of visual agenda for your advertising. And of course, you tag the speakers, which is amazing because then the friends of the speakers will be like, oh, what are you gonna talk about? I'm so thrilled, they want to know. So there's a lot of buzz about it. Seems like really easy, but it happened to me a lot of times that my friends were like, or oh, even my mother, oh, I saw on Facebook you were tagged, what happened? So that's a good thing. And then you give face to the clubs. So again, it's putting a face to who is belonging to the club to who is active into the club. And this really helps building up new members. So moving forward, all of this, so what you've seen so far has not been paid. So all the people rich in things, we have allocated no money. But at some point we wanted to do paid campaigns because we were like, ah, oh, you know, we want to target better. We want to focus better on certain people than others. So we started doing this Facebook campaigns, real paid campaigns. And then I can also show you, I'm not really sure how much time I have used already. I'm just now checking my timer. Well, I have already spent 36 minutes more than that. So for now, I just leave it here. Then if there's a Q&A later, and that you're curious on seeing how to place all of this boosted posts, how you promote an event and things, and how you also allocate the money. And then, of course, I'm more than happy to spend time on that. But just real quick, you go on your um, team, uh, sorry, on your club page, and then you press insights, and there you see all the overviews. And automatically there, you have create new promotion on the top right. And then you can allocate money. It works like a bid. So like you basically put some money, say $10, and then you tell him, which people you would like to target, in what timing. So you choose if it is like during the week, during the weekends, in the morning, in the evening, in the afternoon, you choose. And of course, you can gather information by doing research as we did on the field. You can do some studies, you can do simply some like choices at board level. And then automatically, he, he I mean here meaning Facebook, it will place automatically the different posts all over the place according to who you're targeting and according also to the format of the post. But this is all very much user-friendly. So this is an initiation. Go on your page of your club and sites and create new promotion. Then also, like the other thing that I'd like to throw out, out there is, first, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to walk you through that. Second, if you did this already, how did it go? Like, did it work out? Because it's like in our case, it worked out pretty well, but I have to admit that overall the results were not crazy better than the times that we were just simply tagging people in. So the tagging people in without using money worked just fine. With the money, it could work a little bit better, but with the money, there is a drawback that there are a lot of criteria that you got to stick to. So like 
in what area you want to target, what age of people you want to, male or female or both, what kind of education or what type of job do they have. So it's very much segmented. So that could be the drawback on the paid campaigns. But I always suggest to give it a try to see how the system works and how far you can bring your club. Should there be any questions, please interrupt. I'm more than happy about that. And then we can, like, regarding how Facebook campaigns work, I can take it later in terms of steps, but in general questions regarding that, I'm more than happy to answer it now. <clears throat> but I think there is something. Cool. So, regarding Facebook campaigns, I'm not working for Facebook, so I'm not promoting a product, but I'm just sharing my own insights and uh, what I enjoyed about the Facebook campaigns. It is that it's intuitive, uh, it's easy to use, and you can control that from also your smartphone. It's relatively low cost. If you like compare that to newspaper ads, which are still in use in some areas, but they're way more expensive. They're easy to track because you have, again, complete ownership. You see exactly here, you see people reached or video views or post engagement and engagement and people reached and et cetera. So you know exactly what's happening with your ads out there. You know how much you spend because you decide on that and you see how much that has been allocated. And also, you know how your guests reach to you because you see there how many people engaged. So something that, for example, we did was like in this paid ads, if there was somebody commenting or liking it or whatever they were doing, so they were engaging with the post itself, we were actually texting them. We're like, oh, we saw that you got in contact with us. We have our next meeting this day. Would you be interested? So that's a cool way to get in contact with people that you may not know. And it's creative, like you can be really creative. You can put whatever photos, whatever video you want. You can have different formats. You can have people having fun. And it's actually an amazing opportunity for your board members to feel challenged and not to feel like, oh, this is normal. It's just a post on Facebook. No, you'd be like, let's do something big. Let's do some concepts. Let's do some planning over the months, which is really challenging. It's not easy and it's a lot of learning. And of course, all of this is tailored to your own club, so you have no agency in between that you got to revert to. The challenges, wrapping up the whole presentation that I found in all of this is the board goals. I mean, I am very motivated, I'm very passionate, but it's very important since the club is not run by one person, but it's run by a team of people, is to understand what do we guys want? Do we want to engage more? Do we want to have more likes or do we want to be more uh, making our audience more aware of ourselves. So it's important to have board goals. Now we have the five plus five, so finding new five members. And this is a campaign that is running across all clubs before the year ends. Also in our club in Toastmasters Calling, we are now 16 members, we got to hit 20. And for us, it's a big thing because we got a charter now. It's like been two years and we're almost closer to that line. But of course, this is a, a cross club and cross country invitation to use all of those small tips and all of those insights that I provided you with to get to grow your club, to get to increase your membership base and to get to engage more with people. Budgeting limits is another challenge. So how much money, how many DKK, how many euros do you want to allocate for this? And I gave you all the hints regarding how to save money, basically posting and tagging people without boosting the, the post with any money or doing that with the money. HR limitations. How many human resources do we have? How many smiles? How many people can you put out there? How many people will you listen to, to this crazy ideas and strategies? It's very important. It's very important to know how far you can go with your strategies and how far you can go with your goals. And get people to join the party. That's also increasingly, amazingly, and extremely important. If you have the idea, me, Sebastian, I don't have this crazy idea, and I want support from our club, from my club, and then I don't have the people joining the party, well, then it's going to be me. And of course you can do that, but you know, it feels different. So make sure you're not the only one having the drive and having the interest on getting those goals done. Find a common goal, find common people, maybe two or three in total, that will help you out getting this through. And keep record of your activities. I have also examples of reports that I did on our Facebook campaign, 
that I did on our survey that I'm more than happy to share with you. But I mean, there's no need now to go through them because I'm talking as always, as all Italians do, too much. So let's see what's left. Takeaways. Well, you have money here. Well, is somebody asking any question? Uh, yes, actually, Sebastiano, yes, we have a question from Ilya, who's asking how to start right for the clubs who don't have Facebook page yet. What the most important things recommended to do for people with limited time and other resources? Can you please share some ideas for corporate clubs? Okay, that's something that gets me like very, very interested because I've never worked within a corporate club. But what I would think is a coffee machine. Stick something on the coffee machine, figure the make the Facebook group, the Facebook page real quick. It really takes five minutes. Just go there, put a picture, put the photo of two sponsors as the profile pic. And then make something out of the cover picture that I created. Really very easy to do on PowerPoint. I can also share it to you personally how I did that or to anybody who's interested. It really takes three minutes. So that you know that your club is sending out in a very clear way. And then be creative. Put that on the coffee machines, got colleagues, go to their desk and pop by like you know, you print out some some words and some things relating to your club and relate to the Facebook page and get engaged firstly one on one within the corporation. That's my suggestion. Okay, thank you very much for that. I have just some comments about the sponsorship campaigns because I was uh, also doing some experiments with uh, with um, paying campaigns, and I have to admit that I have the same uh, conclusion as you that um, um, it wasn't worth enough in our case as well. Uh, for me, it was definitely better to tag people and to, for example, I don't know. Um, like putting information about our events on uh, different Facebook groups, um, like uh, which were in our city, like foreigners um, groups, Erasmus groups, what's happening in our city. And it was definitely th the return of guests was um, definitely higher than when I was just paying for the uh, for the campaigns. And just one question, uh, because you mentioned at the beginning that you spent uh, 20 euro um for the campaigns um but it was like monthly or it was for your term how was it so that one actually we decide every board meeting we have a board meeting every month so then we decide for the upcoming um days what's happening and in that case we decided three hours a month so that was a monthly okay but many times just so you know we were not using the full budget Okay, thank you very much for answering. No problem. So I get to the takeaway and uh, conclude uh, the whole presentation. As you see now, the light bar at the bottom is all light blue. There's no more blue. There's no more talking, hopefully. And uh, so takeaways. First one, if you have the time and the resources, do some Facebook page planning. Second, get your board active if possible. It's very important that at least with one person you get very much connected and you have a second shoulder somehow on whom to rely on to. Tag people, that's the way to save money. Share the likes. That's what I mean is to, well, share the likes means I, I have my own explanation to this sentence. I know it's not straightforward, but what I meant by this is first, share other organizations posts. So in that way of sharing the engagement, and second of all, is actually to like a lot other organizations in general, like be active in terms as a, as an entity within your area. Don't be closed minded and be like, okay, I just care about myself and to grow myself. No, the more you grow is coming from the more you connect to others and the more you connect to other people and other entities around you. Drop comments. Uh, drop comments here. I mean, comment, make sure, like I was remembering, bagging my board members and my people, please comment on an event. Please say that you're excited about it or please ask a question. What are you going to do? Whatever. Drop a comment because when there are posts with comments, they are stronger, at least to my eyes as a normal Facebook user. Track activity trends. 
So you may see over like a number of different pages that certain things go in certain periods, like say the capitals, say the emoticons, say the video, say whatever. So keep track of that and also keep track of what actions you've taken so that you can see what results there were. This is not something to be scientific. It could be like simply a Word document we're writing, okay, January we tried this out, in February it turned out it was good, or no, it wasn't because of this reason. So something just to have a kind of diary for the club to know what you have allocated your energies on. So what's next? Well, at the time, it was to try Facebook page Pup Boost that now I tried, but at the time that I made this presentation, I did not try yet because this was part of a training to a chief officer training happening in Aris. Do the thank you post plus tagging so you can thank you the people who join your meetings the people who come to your meetings, the people who simply make a difference. It could be even within board members. If you have a board member who's very committed, take a nice picture, whatever picture of that person and say thank you and be like, we as a club, thank you, this person because of this and he did this. Just praise people and make it look as human as you can in terms of on social media or whatever other platform you're using. So this is something that I would have loved to do, it not really happened, my bad, <laughs> was to have a vice president for public relations, but of course this is open to more people who ever is interested, quarterly meetings. So say like all of us in the district, be like, okay, every four months I want to have a meeting, like this a webinar, where we be like, oh, our club had this, oh, my club did that other initiative to tell us how do you do that so it's basically a kind of conference like where we share our thoughts and we share our strategies because from the survey and having this one-on-one -on -one conversation somebody else may have another idea on something else completely different but who got inspired by that or vice versa so to me the goal was also to get a kind of community of passionates about pr and passionates about social media and how to grow the club by improving the brand image of ourselves. This is all. Thank you very much for having listened to this Italian who spoke for so long. And uh, I welcome any question you may have. And for sure, I'm going to share all the documents that I have that you may fancy having. Thank you very much.